themselves to get out the door and go, because they feel so much better again. And um, I don't know how much you know of Rock Choir. Those membership packs that we gave out have the story of Rock Choir in it, um, so at least you know what you're part of. And um, some of you here are a year two choir, aren't you? And some are year one, and some probably joined two or three weeks ago, maybe, some of you? Who, who joined just recently? Ooh. Oh, oh, wow, okay. What are you doing? Ever so well? <laughs> you know all the routines there, is um, But the whole point of Rock Choir really is, is um, about community and bringing people together to sing. And the way I see it is that you're part of one choir in this country, and although you rehearse separately, you're part of one choir, which is why um, we like to organise events, uh, for example, the Wembley Arena event. Um, I don't know if any of you saw that on TV or sort on YouTube or anything. But it was such an amazing day to bring everyone together. And I remember standing on the stage introducing the Scottish members to the Hertfordshire members and all waving at each other. And it was just a really nice feeling that you were all part of something together. And, um, and the, these songs, because I'm going around and I'm, I'm not checking or, or testing or anything. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> interested to see if every night everyone's doing the same routine. Because uh, that in itself is a phenomenon, really, to bring you all together across the country and you actually sing your harmonies and dance at the same time, the same thing. So even the stops, you know, when we get you to stop on that particular beat, has everyone stopped on the same beat? Or will there be this ripple effect? <laughs> um, now the O2 um, itself, we, we, we were hoping they would be ready by tonight. The deadline was today to have the online um, kind of booking of seats system ready and they haven't managed to do it. So I was going to come armed with handouts and talk you through the system because of course the logistics behind the scene are quite... Um, incredible to organise something like this. Um, a few years ago we organised the Hammersmith Apollo event which was to launch our first album and we had seven days to turn it around and it was quite nerve-wracking. Two years on it was um, last year's Wembley Arena gig which we had six months to plan and this one coming up we've been planning for about a year um, because they get bigger and bigger as we go through. So um, the plans for the tickets in terms of getting your seats, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to get those um, details to you and hope that you will understand how we've written it so that um, the girls maybe can go through it with you. I know you thought I was turning up, but their deadline was today. Um, and Avril, who's sitting over there, who I should introduce, who organises all of the logistics um, for Rock Choir, um, is, is busy doing it. Do you want to stand up? You're very tiny. <laughs> <Avril. laughs> you might have had emails from Avril. Avril, the rock party. And next to Avril is um, Captain Rockcar, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can stand up. You're not. <laughs> 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 you. Can I come with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the two of them together work really well, and, and I said to them, look, you do everything to do with seats and tickets and logistics, and I'll do everything on the stage. I said, I get the fun bit. <laughs> sure. um, and, and they wanted to really be, be here for the tour as well, just in case you had any questions. But I don't know how much you know about the gigs next year and what you're leading to. You know all these songs you're, gonna, you're learning are leading to that event. Um, and I hope you're all able to make it. We've given you a year's notice. <laughs> Uh, whereas it was seven days the first time. Mind you, three and a half thousand members came to the Hammersmith Apollo to, to launch that album. Um, and the next day it went to number one in five Amazon charts. Uh, we beat Eminem. hysterical. Eminem was at number one on the Amazon bestsellers chart. Oh. We, we, we knocked Kylie out. <laughs> and I couldn't quite believe that. She's quite vague, isn't she? But uh, Eminem was at number, uh, number one. We were number two. And I just thought, no. no. <laughs> Yeah. And then we fought him for two weeks. We did this on the positions number one and two in terms of our album, switching, switching. And every time I get a text at three in the morning from one of the rock choir leaders saying, we're number two, I was like, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's not reading the charts, it's still being a fan of our own. <laughs> I ended up, and they Amazon sent every album that I'd ordered personally in a separate padded envelope. <laughs> and I thought, we can just bring a crate in in one go. And yeah. they were stacked up in, in my house. Just, and my husband said, how many did you buy? I'm like, oh, I think we're over 200. <laughs> <laughs> but since then, lots of new members have come in and wanted the album and have just bought it off us. So I have to say, ha see, there's a system here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Not bring money? I don't know. <laughs> But so we've suddenly got the head, and actually, I'm, I keep going back to talking about album because when we do the O2 performance, we're actually going to launch a new rock choir album. I've had a couple of years off because it was quite grueling when we when we did the first one to get it to number 17 in the main Sunday charts. 
was quite a feat. Um, and uh, I wanted to really ask you whether you wanted to be on the album, whether you, you do want to be on the album, and, and whether you're... I've had two nods over there, no one else. <laughs> the O2 and these kind of shows when you come together and, and this album kind of plan and, and, and the O2s these are the kind of frilly I call them the frilly bits on the edge of rock car because what we've got to remember is rock car is it's the rehearsals it's the weekly rehearsals and the fun you have and the bonding that goes on the social side of it that's really really important that's what rock car was about and always will be but these frilly things are the kind of extra um, on the edges that you can take part in or not. Some of you might not want to be on an album. Um, I have no idea why you wouldn't want to be on an album, but <laughs> it's just me. But you'll be given the opportunity to come and actually record and be on that album, and your name will go in the album. So, yeah, you unfold it that way. <laughs> so one of those posters you get through your magazine. Um, but the idea is. Um, I'm, I'm very much about trying to achieve amazing things, and I get my kicks um, out of that. And rock crime, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's a business, oh, it's a, it's a franchise, it's not a franchise, it's this, it's that. But actually, it's, it's not any of those things. It, the business, it became a business organically. It just became that. And I'm not a business person at all, and yet people think I am, um, which is quite hysterical for me, because I said, well, I'm a pop star all the time. I'm trying to be a pop star. <laughs> Uh, and for me, it's the music, and it's it's the singing, it's the te I love teaching, it's all that side of things that's really important. Um, but we managed to get that, that album to number 17, and um, we have to get to number one. We just, it's just one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> and these four guys, they see me all the time doing to training, I go, I have to go to number one, and I go, she's going on about it again, I'm sorry, I have to go to number one. Um, and it's just, it's purely to get to number one. So you can go around going, my album's at number one. You can go around going, my album's at number one. <laughs> When we released, it's funny, we had a thousand members in Rock Car at the time of recording album one, and then three and a half thousand members in Rock Car by the time we released it, because of that duration of time that went by. And although two and a half thousand members weren't on the album, they got really behind it. We put their names in it, so they still felt, because they were in Rock Car at the time, it went out. But they actually, I had reports of um, members going into the local HMV, chasing young teenagers around the shop, forcing them to buy the album, <laughs> just so they could sign it. <laughs> and I, you know, you know, not complete, gentle kind of, complete managers going um, to the record label, going, oh, there's these ladies, they're everywhere. <laughs> and I thought, well, they want to sign their album, is that? Of course they want it. I mean, it's a dream come true for lots of people. Who would have thought? that you know, a lady in her 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s would actually be signing their own album. <laughs> and uh, I said, go with it. Let them have the fun. They said, they've worked hard. This is what we do. And uh, I said, all right then. And then the, the next door was them getting a manager to put it on the playlist actually in the shop so that the, the album was going. And they went on shifts, making sure that the album was playing in HMV <laughs> and getting these poor teenagers who were trying to buy Maroon 5 and probably <laughs> having uh, to sign them. Yeah, to get them to sign it. So, um, between us, between 16,000 of us, we should be able to mob every single HMV <laughs> and get it signed by everyone. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yeah. 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 Okay. So the idea at the O2 is that we're, we're going to be singing through all these lovely songs that you're, you've learnt some of them last year, which will carry forward, and then the, the, the new ones. And I've already, I'm even planning it today, I was playing which songs in which order and what we're going to do. And the lovely leaders, of course, who um, are just fantastic, um, with me as a team, we're going to be performing for you as well. So we're going to make it slightly different from the show we did at Wembley, and we're going to be performing some rock songs for you. Um, they just don't know which ones yet, and I um, haven't made them up yet. <laughs> We've already planned lots of rehearsals, haven't we, and everything. So by the time you get the atmosphere, it should be electric, and everyone will shout, Simon, and going for it, and it was quite... Wait, did you come along to it? I didn't know, I had a show. And you weren't even with the team, then, were you? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad was there, you were on stage now, but you were there, weren't you? I got my dad up at the end, it was very family oriented. That was your moment of glory, wasn't it, on stage? I uh, completely forgot about my husband, and they were shouting. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in terms of the song um, How Deep Is Your Love, that was meant to be a lovely, kind of easy introduction whilst the other crowd were doing a happy day. 
into rock choir after all the complaints I did receive <laughs> about the routine. So is, is that, that's okay, isn't it? That's long. Yeah. yeah. Right, but you are ready for a challenge and some more difficult ones, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you know, when I sent that email out saying, right, okay, I'm sorry, you know, I've got carried away, I'm listening, I'm, I'm hearing you. And I said, you guys, we're going to have to make it all easier. And then I had this massive load of emails coming in saying, don't make it easier. We like the challenge. Um, don't change. Don't be bullied into changing what you do. And I thought, well, I'm just making the routines in my kitchen with some vodka. <laughs> 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 we can kind of do what we want. But there was a sense of that, and I, and I we actually tried it out in the choir. We tried a much easier version of the song that you're going to be learning for the O2, um, all over the world. ELO. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ones you're going to do, and also rolling in the deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and both of them go to six part harmony. And only any choirs less than twelve at the moment. <laughs> right, so okay, six parts, because if there's six of you, that's one part each. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is, this is useful to come together as a big thing, isn't it? Because you yes. can start hearing the sound and yeah. working. We like to do these kinds of things. Um, but those basically tried a much easier routine with those two songs with the choirs that had learned it in year eight and um, it just didn't look right it just didn't feel right, didn't look right um, so I kind of brought those routines back in as they were uh, but my job now is to make sure the leaders are absolutely sure and confident in all of those routines before they even bring them to you so that they can teach them in various different ways so that you get hold of them quicker they also should be introducing routines into your warm ups Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. You wait. <laughs> That's all over the world. Yeah. Do you remember the routine all over the world? This. Isn't Something it? like that, yeah. songs are chosen for variation and ooh, for, that's the best actually, for variation and because um, you don't want to be singing every song in full choir format all the way through from start to finish A, it'll take you ages to get through them uh, it'll take you probably two songs a turn and you want to be getting through three or four really, you know, to be moving forward and the audience is, the sound of that texture of three lines in every single song just gets boring after a while so you need to give the audiences variation plus having a solo for a soloist gives some of you who are perhaps maybe been in it or rock quite a while a chance to kind of think, well, I'm going to have a go at the next step. We're not expecting everyone to want to be a soloist, but for those who do, it kind of gives a bit of a variation in terms of that as well. So I do get emails saying, oh, we just feel like backing singers. I said, well, that's not what it is. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the song, stripping it back at the piano, literally in my house at the piano, with, a, with ink and paper and rescoring it to work for all parts. So something like How Deep... I made sure the melody line, that we all had a bit of the melody line, and I wrote it so it spread across the three parts like that. Made sure the routine was more basic in terms of settling you into something. Well, you can't do anything crazy with that song. There's yeah. nothing really you can do with it. Um, but something like Disco Inferno, Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do something crazy with that, haven't you? <laughs> I'm every woman but in Houston. You can't go, you can't just do the whole song like that. You've got to do something. That's not coming up yet, by the way. <laughs> Tween, somebody to love goes into ten part harmony. You're not ready for that yet. <laughs> you know, but it's a, it's a great, but it does go into ten part harmony. So some of the choirs, especially in year one, which are smaller and will take a while to develop, you know, I don't want to put you off and have all ten of you that are in that choir doing one part each and then not going to come back. <laughs> so every, everything you're doing, there's a, there's a decision that's been made and it's always for the good of you. You're always... You know, at the front of this, in terms of the membership, and, and, and the, every gig, every every decision is about you, and it's been like that since the beginning. And although I've never met you till tonight, I have I have a sense of loyalty to you, as though you know you've been brave enough to come into this kind of crazy rock choir world. And most of you probably never even been in a choir before, or sung, or, or you're singing in the car on the way to work, or you're singing in the shower. That kind of you know, background, maybe. Or maybe you're all music scholars, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, you've been brave enough to enter this world, my baby, you could say, and I feel huge loyalty to you, and everything we're doing is to make you happy, really. Um, I mean, last week I was up in front of a panel of judges for, for an award. It's called the um, That West Every Woman Award. Uh, have you heard of that one? I don't know if you heard. But there was Kath Kidston, you know, Kath Kidston, I think. 
and she, she introduced herself as the shopkeeper. And I went, no, not. You're an empire. And the shopkeeper, no, not. And we had this thing. I was very humble of you, Ken. You know, but we were talking about how it's about the people and how, you know, we just had this lovely conversation about um, how inclusive rock choir is and, and, and how it's all for you and it's all about making you happy and confident. Um, and, and I said the business kind of side of it is kind of over there. I mean, I still go to my dad, I mean, I'm only 14, I go to my dad and I say, um, can I have some money? <laughs> and he says, what, what do you want for? Yeah, he's got his glasses on now. <laughs> I said, uh, I want to put the O2. How much is it? I said, I don't know, I think it's got to lots of money. <laughs> said, well, you, you go find out how much it is and I'll tell you if you can do it. So, oh, thanks. And, it, <laughs> and then he comes up and goes, yes, okay, dear, you can do it. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> yeah, it's funny because the outside world thinks it's some big corporation of suited, booted, grey suits in high rise buildings in London. And we go around giggling, don't we? I'm like, not just us. <laughs> <laughs> And recently, there was a business magazine approached me and said, could I give my top tips on um, success? And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I read all these other people said, yeah, boring, yeah, boring. Yeah. Do you know that magazine? <laughs> business Matters, I've never heard of that. I don't read any magazines like that. You know, house magazines, basically. Um, anyway, I was reading all these points these other people have made about finance. And I glaze over as soon as the numbers are in the <laughs> I go to my dad, how can I give these people advice? They're like... CEOs at top companies in the UK, I've got a clue, you know, so I was right, so I said, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a comedy tip. So, so I wrote ten comedy tips on how to stay sane. <laughs> and I talked about holidays and I talked about delegation and, and uh, what's that word again? <coughs> Consolidation. You see I can't even remember the word. You know. <laughs> what is that? You know, for an activist like me, it's like what is that what does that word mean? I don't even know. So I wrote about the word consolidation and how it would take me ages just to remember it. And then when it came up in meetings, how frightened I was of it. Because to me, it was like, charge, all, all or nothing. Three muskets, you know, let's, let's achieve everything we can and not ever rest. So, you know, I wrote all these top tips and then, then food and how important it is and how great Rice Krispies are to keep going. <laughs> you know, how um, a bottle of Chablis and dairy milk chocolate sounds odd, but actually is such a great reward combination. <laughs> <laughs> All these grey suits and boots are going to read this and think, what on earth is going on? I said, well, that's just how it is. Don't, I don't see myself as a businesswoman. I'm a musician, always was. From the age of four, I was teaching uh, my school how to sing the hymn when I was at infant school. And that's why I got into music, because the headmistress rang my mum and said, we think Caroline might be a um, musical, because she keeps irritating everyone by standing up <laughs> and teaching everyone like this. And that was at age of four. So I'm not doing anything different now than I was then. Um, I ask for pocket money from my dad, um, and I write comedy entries into serious business magazines. <laughs> um, but you know, that, that's I wanted you. I wanted to meet you and, and let you know that what you're part of is actually something really, really special. And there isn't some agenda, and there isn't some way for. I mean, we just go year by year, saying, well, what what cool things can we do this year? And I've got my head around Guinness World Records now, and we've got three, and I'm going right. How many more can we get? Um, just, just like a blue Peter badge. Let's all try and get a blue Peter badge because that would be a really cool thing to do. Um, but I'm rounding a bit. Sorry, I get told off. Um, have you got any questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you all get it. Do you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Ramble. <laughs> oh no, you're writing it. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you must have any phoenix. Yes. Okay, that's test. Okay, first one. <laughs> word for word, because they were the largest musical act to release an album signed. The signed was in brackets to stop other people just saying, well, I've released an album too, when they haven't really. So, largest musical act to release an album. The second one was the biggest hit act in the UK. That's quite a nice one. And the last one was the largest simultaneous song and dance routine in multiple venues. <laughs> so there, there are three. Um, we need another one. <laughs> we'll probably do something at the O2. Might as well, all together. Uh, I don't know what we can do. I'll have to have a think about it. We're thinking of recording you doing a pop video as well. Turn it to all over the world, which is one you haven't learnt yet, which is not what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a 
shop pretend I mean the whole skulking around thing was hysterical because we asked you to act as though you had nothing to do with what was gonna happen and it so didn't work. Yeah and everyone's going going oh, would anyone have black trousers on? Yeah. But that actually I tell you what a black shirt there's a whole debate training about the black trouser thing. Because of course when you stripped your jacket off on cue towards the end of the song and you all looked beautiful and your uniform like we do now that moment was so dramatic, and if you'd been in different coloured bottom halves, it just wouldn't have looked as good, because suddenly you were a choir and you were mm. uniform. And that's why I made the decision right at the last minute to say, no, no, let's do the black trousers. And I said, but everyone will have different coloured coats on, but everyone was going on about these black trousers. And people will notice, I said, you don't go around noticing black trousers. But then, of course, if there were 600 of you all in one space, all the black trousers, <laughs> yeah, maybe they didn't notice. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to do another flash mob, I mean, you can do them every week if you want. You'll <laughs> 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 get together with rock band and go, I know, let's meet secretly in this location and do a flash mob. Uh, but the, doing it nationwide was, was, was really lovely. Um, and of course, raised, I, mean, I think we've raised over three hundred and fifty thousand pounds for charity this year, um, and not just one charity, lots and lots. Because you all have your own charities that are close to your heart, and um, we get probably about 10, 10 requests every month to go and do a charity event. What well, we do in the office, I don't know what happens out on the road, but um, huge amounts of opportunity. We've been asked to do the moonwalk as well, perform at the moonwalk. Do any of you do the moonwalk? <laughs> That's breast cancer, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good event, isn't it? Uh, Hyde Park, you do a moonwalk in your bras um, around Hyde Park, don't you? And Rock Cry's been asked to perform on stage. Um, it, we're in the debate sort of, you know, talking um, kind of section, aren't we? To see if it'll work. But, but that, that's a good event for next year. Any other questions? Yes? Always open suggestions. Uh, something inside of strong actually came in from a member, and I've forgotten all about it. So, so, and it's become our big anthem. So, um, it's great if you could email in; that'd be great. Lots of you choose the same songs. Some people come out with um, ones that just are so difficult to make work for rock. Quite. If you take um, take Stevie Wonder songs, okay, really, I'm a big fan of Stevie Wonder. Those songs never seem to work because he his voice is so um, the rhythm. Is so spread out over the kind of main melody, it's difficult mm. to fit it into a structure that we can then teach because he just kind of improvises a lot of this mm. stuff. So, if you bear that in mind when you choose, what we need is a solid chorus that's, that will work, 
what the verses, maybe a soloist can do it, you know, or not, but some songs I think, oh, I really want this to, to work. Like I'm Every Woman in Houston, just haven't been able to make it work. I've tried it twice. It just doesn't work. Um, but other songs are surprises, like um, How Deep Is Your Love? And I thought, oh, that's really nice. That works really well. Um, Rolling in the Deep is a goodie. Um, but those big things like Where You Lead. You done Where You Lead? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, some of you have. That's a really good one, isn't it? Because you're singing out. So I'm trying to choose songs where ideally you're singing all the way through. Because I know you like that. And those big songs where you're, you're pushing everything out. Proud, Heather Small. That's one that you're going to learn this year. Um, do you know that one? Um, that's called Down Ever So Well. But the first choir that's just loved that. You haven't heard that, have you? Sure, I know. Um, what else? You're the voice, John Farnham. You're the voice, try and understand it. Make a noise, make it real. Whoa. Your line out is sorry in advance for it. 